Bonjour, everyone. Welcome to another live stream edition of Cafe Day. Renee, James here, joined once again by the Star Show, Mr. Renee Dupree. Renee, where's Fifi? Fifi is taking a nap, but he might be joining us a little later. He's had a rough day. He had, he went for a walk, he went for his hour walk, and now he's a little tired. So, but he might be making an appearance. Seems like he's very popular with the uh, the cafe crew, huh? I've seen the comments. Yeah, I think I put on the vid. <laughs> I just released a clip today, the John Larnais clip, and upon it, you know, like and subscribe if you love Fifi. And like the video, had like so many likes straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so people love Fifi. People love Fifi. Yeah. So, so what's exciting in the wrestling world there, Jameson? We've got a few stories, Renee. Uh, so obviously, name of the show tonight is Goldberg is Angry Again. So um, we spoke about, what was it, uh, a couple of months ago when Ray Cove was on the show. And I think he was on with Paul. And he had a bit of a rant towards Vince McMahon, saying broken promises and such. Right. So now he's decided to target Oscar. So he was, he was on the podcast, nothing left unsaid. Uh, he said, a girl beat my winning streak, beat my undefeated streak. Yeah, I can't even remember. Asuka, her name is. Some Japanese girl. And he touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak. So he's upset because Asuka, when she was in NXT, she was, well, she never got beaten in NXT. She had this uh, undefeated streak and it lasted longer than um, Goldberg or no, or she had like more wins than Goldberg during that streak. Still real to him, <laughs> goddammit. It's still rolling me down. It's uh, well, Bill, don't feel so bad. An eight-year-old beat my record. <laughs> you don't see me bitching, complaining about it, dear. It's a work, Bill. It's it's a work. Like that hundred and eighty-three and oh, I don't even think that was a legit number. It was Hell like no. way, it was way out. lower than that. They didn't do house shows. House shows. Yeah. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Oh. So, um, but yeah, he's got upset from it. Um, so I, I've listened to some podcasts, uh, but like, well, not even podcasts, like the old shoot interviews you would get from, like, say, uh, Sean Oliver, etc. Right. And so many wrestlers would talk about how paranoid Goldberg would be. And uh, I remember reading uh, Brett's book, and he... Do you remember the spot between Brett and Goldberg when Goldberg speared him and Brett had the metal plate underneath his pocket jersey? Yeah. Knocked him out. Probably the only good thing Brett done in WCW, let's be honest. Yeah. Um. So anyway, when uh, Brett told him the idea a few days before, and Goldberg was all up for it, it's like, yeah, sounds like a great idea. And um, what about a day... The day off the show, or the, like the day before the show, I don't know if it was Nash or maybe Hogan had got into his ear saying, oh, this is going to bury you. This is going to make you look weak. And uh, Goldberg decided to change his mind. He's like, yeah, I'm not doing it. It's going to make me look weak. And according to Brett in his book, he said, I had to talk to him for hours to like get him to convince him to do the spot. And it's a memorable spot, which it is. Um, but yeah. That's the problem, isn't it? With wrestling, well, because he didn't come for it in these. He was a you know football player. They yeah. put him into the power plant and they fast tracked him to the main event. Don't get me wrong, but I was a big fan of Goldberg. I loved the streak and the way he was portrayed. But I guess he didn't understand the uh, locker room politics during them days, especially with the likes of Hogan, Nash, and you know Scott Hall. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. One of those two, probably Nash. Yeah, getting in his ear and just fucking with him. It's, that's the bullshit that just makes it not fun. You know what I mean? Just, oh, God. It's wrestling, guys. It's fucking wrestling. <laughs> oh. anyway. anyway, well, so some other stories. So uh, we spoke about last week. So we broke down the uh, AEW ratings for Dynamite. Yes, we did. So, uh, this past week, uh, it was a regular edition. Well, I say it was a regular edition of Dynamite. They uh, went to Toronto. Um, they sold out. Uh, main event was Edge v. Christian for the TNT title. 
So uh, we've got the ratings. So the first quarter hour, they started off um, Mercedes Monet live promo. Before I get to that, like her theme song is not memorable at the minute. It's just pr pretty generic. With the amount of money that Tony Khan splashes out, wouldn't you think it's a missed opportunity if she's not coming out to be the idol, Moni Moni? That would be over for me. Mm, is it really worth it? If you told Tony it would be, he would give it. <laughs> well, yeah, but... I don't know. Depending how much they want for the, you know how much WCW paid for Voodoo Child. No. Two hundred and fifty grand. Every time it was played. No, one flat fee. All oh, right. Yeah, for Hogan. Yeah. Voodoo Child. Down, 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 yeah, down, yeah, down, yeah. Down, 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 down. Yeah, two hundred and fifty grand. That was it. That was a steal, bro. Well, uh, Michael Buffer wasn't it? Who done WCW? I yeah. get him mixed up. Him and Bruce. It's Michael Buffer. Didn't he get paid like stupid amount every time he came out and say, "Let's get ready to rumble"? I mean, it was tens, if not twenties, of thousands. He was getting paid every time he would come out and do it. Really. Yeah, he was making bank. Yeah, well, it was Jimi Hendrix's sister who controlled Jimmy's estate or whatever. And, but yeah, it was a quarter of a mil, and they just got to play it. Like, it was just one flat fee, a quarter of a mil. That was a steal. That was, because, uh, I mean, I loved Hollywood Hogan, NWO, yeah. and uh, everyone knew, well, I don't know how much of a prick Hogan was, but like you play into it, don't you? You play into your character, and I mean the ratings didn't lie for WCW. It worked big time. Yep, big time. So anyway, speaking of ratings, so we'll go back to AW. So yeah, uh, started off Mercedes Money Live promo uh, with Julia Hart, Sky Blue, and Willow Nightingale, and Chris Statlander being part of it, and then a backstage angle between Okada and the Young Bucks, nine hundred and eleven thousand. Okay, so compared to last week, that is down 89,000. Yes, last week we started at 1 million. Now, I did say you do get that overrun from the uh, Big Bang Theory audience. It seems to be a pretty big audience. So I say that the second quarter is probably the true reflection of the number where it starts. Okay. So uh, anyway... Second quarter, um, we've got Eddie Kingston and Kasichika Okada. Uh, sorry, Eddie Kingston first is uh, Kasichika Okada. This is for the uh, Continental Championship, I believe. Uh, through picture and picture ads, 838,000. Okay, so help me out with the math here. Uh, just do 62. Let's see, 62, 72, uh, 73,000 are down. So down 73. Give me, let me get a pen and paper here so I can just... Yeah, let's be professional for a change. Professional here for once, folks. Okay. So they started off... 9-11. 9-11. And now they're 838. 838. Okay. There's also, on this graph, there's a trend in line. So it tells you how it compares to uh, last week. So this is a little bit below last week at the minute. So next segment, 8.38.45. Picture-in-picture uh, -picture ad break. Uh, the continuation of Kingston versus Odkada. Uh, Pack interferes. Sean Strickland backstage promo. And then you got Nightingale, Statlander, Monet, Stokely, Backstage Angle, and then the beginning of Chris Jericho versus Hook. We are now down to 791,000. Whoa! Okay, so that's... Uh... 
Okay, that's down. Oh, geez, concussion. 50, 56,000, it's down. 56,000 down. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure it's not 47,000 down? Is it? Um, I think it's right. 90. Yeah, 56,000. 56,000 down. Minus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's name the names that were in those segments now. You had Mercedes Monet, Chris Jericho, Okada. Yeah. So, it started off, so it started off the continuation between Eddie Kingston and Okada. Yeah, but that just this last segment there, this last quarter, you had Jericho, Monet, Okada. Who else? Yeah. Um, Mercedes Monet, uh, Stokely Hathaway, Hook, Nightingale, Statlander backstage promo. So, put it this way: we've we spoke about contracts last week. Yes. We got a rough idea how much Okada is being paid. It's being paid between three and four million a year. That's it. Jericho, safe Same to say, money. he's on about four or five million a year. Mercedes Monet, about two to three million, let's say. Okay. So you're talking the best part of 11 million. 11 million. A year. And for them, did, just them three. Then it dropped 56,000 more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Plus packs the there. And packs oh, another two million. Packs another two million. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we started right. at nine eleven. Now we're down to seven ninety one. Yeah. So, yeah. We right eight forty five to nine p.m. Uh, two picture and picture ad breaks. So the continuation of Chris Jericho versus Hook, followed by an Adam Cole promo ad break, and then a Jericho promo. We are now down to seven hundred and thirty-five thousand fans. Oh, seven hundred thirty-five. So, uh, uh, five to forty, fifty. That's another fifty-six thousand. Hmm. Okay, another minus fifty-six thousand. All right. Keep going. So, um. Uh, Right, next one, uh, top of the hour. So you you've said previously this is where it normally picks up. Right. With Osprey again, which with Osprey was in the same exact spot last week. Okay. Uh, another another live promo, uh, followed by a promo video for Cop Adam Copeland and Christian Cage, and then you've got Diana Perazzo and Tony Storm versus Mariah May, and. Um, Tony Storm, that can't be right. No, Deanna Prazo, she was tagging with uh, Thunder Rosa. For some reason, it's Tony Storm here. My apologies. Uh, it went up, it went up to 758. So they gained 23,000 fans. <laughs> okay. 23,000. All right. Okay. So, so. 9.15 to 9.30. Uh, continuation of Perazzo and Thunder Rosa versus May and Storm. Then we got an ad break. Uh, Swerve Strickland versus The Butcher. Uh, then Swerve and Samoa Joe live promo. Uh, they go up again. 7.65. So they gained another 7,000 fans. Oh, 7,000 fans. Okay. And... Um, they go up again. Oh. 9.30, 9.45, two picture-in-picture -picture ad breaks, or just two ad breaks. Um, Swerve and Joe, Don Callis live promo ad break, and then they start the main event. Christian Cage versus Adam Copeland. It goes up to 7.89. Woo. So that goes up uh, 23,000. Um, yep, okay, and is that it? Um, and then we've got uh, Edge and Christian continues another ad break 788. So they lose a thousand, but they still pretty much retain the same audience. 788, all right. So they and oh, 
So a little bit of an overrun. Okay. After this, uh, finish of Adam Cage and Adam Copeland. Post match, bang bang gang promo. The acclaimed, um, seven seven six. Oh, so went so, down. Um, went down uh, t- twelve thousand, but 12, they pretty much retained that audience. Um, but yeah, so I think the overall rating, the average rating, I think it was eight hundred k. The overall. So they're pretty much. 800,000 is pretty much their steady all the way through, right? That's their average hardcore audience. And even with all these new signings and all these multi million dollar contracts, you're stuck around 800,000. Yeah. And what people forget as well, they was get. I mean, it was getting more even, but they was getting more f- viewers when they was going head-to-head with NXT on the same night? They were. They were. Uh, it was up because they they, they, they they seemed like both shows seemed to be arguing for that 1.4 million fans that was t- seemed to be tuning every week, and it was like kind of, it was coming and going. It was mainly like NXT, uh, it was mainly AEW who was were winning. Yeah. But, so you would think... NXT moved, so you would think, oh, right, some of them NXT viewers to be... I would say the NXT fans are a bit more hardcore than regular WWE fans, even though it's a WWE show. Um, But you would think, oh, right, we don't have to pick a show between the two now. We can just... We can watch both, so we'll tune it to AEW, and you would think AEW's ratings would go up. But they seem to be back down to this same number. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to tell you, Val. Uh, Dynamite, staying on that, what did you think to that uh, clip I sent you of um, the conclusion of Edge and Christian where he hit him with the uh, Janus, the barbed wire bat or whatever it is, in the nuts. Then they went to an ad break. And they came back, and he threatened to hit on with, at, hit him in the head, and that was the end of the match. Is that just? Did you bad? hear him say "I quit"? Yeah. You heard him say "I quit." Mm. No, realistically, if I were to take a baseball bat and hit you as hard as I can in the testicles, you wouldn't be able to speak. You. you you know what I mean? You you have to be rushed to the hospital. Like it's 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 a horrible finish. Who came up with that? Who 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 was the agent for that match? Seriously. I'd look at some of their agents the other day. And I was like, <laughs> really is these people's the agents? Don't get wrong, you got your Jerry Lynn's, for example, and I think Anne's still there. Like, yeah, no problem, but then no, I think I think Arn left. Arn's gone, yeah. I think he's still listed, but some of the names like I think Orange Cassidy is an agent. Um Orange Cassidy, isn't it? Oh, really? And like some of the names I'm looking at, and I'm like, really? These are the agents? I'm like, a lot of them hasn't really done anything. Here's an idea. It's all elite wrestling. Why don't you grab a hold? A hold and make him I quit instead of smacking the guy in the testicles with a baseball bat. Jesus Christ. Oh, that's embarrassing. Anyway. Well, I'm so I normally never do this. Now, we've got great fans who comments on our videos. Great yeah. fans. Yeah. Obviously, we get trolls now. Like, I'm not bragging but you know the bigger your channel gets obviously over time the channel is going to get more viewers and more subs that's just how it is over time so you're going to get more trolls of course then you get some delusional people and like like i said i want aw is aw to succeed and i've said that many times but and i have said some of their fans not all but some of their fans are legit crazy 
You think? I don't know if that's politically correct to say, but well, I'm not politically I'm not politically correct. Anyway, I'm gonna read you on the comments, and this is like a fucking essay. <laughs> so I'm not gonna name them. Uh but I will say this. First off, you want to put Tony Khan down for all the money he is spending, right? Then start your own wrestling company, period. Also, look on Google what Tony Khan is worth. This year alone, okay, $1.5 billion. And you want to talk shit about him, huh? Another thing, you didn't know this. Uh, the TV rights renew was around $90 million for a couple of years, by the way. And also, <laughs> here is something you didn't know behind the scene. When AEW first started, Tony Khan father said, you better give me a good reason to give you all this money to start the wrestling company. So fat check, not fact checked, fat check. So fat check things before running your mouths about what Tony is spending money at. Also, Tony father has six times more money than Vince McMahon does. <laughs> Someone replied, is this Tony Khan's burner account? <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. Tony he's not Khan's finished. father. He's not finished. Has... Oh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? You should be back. Okay, I get it. Tony Khan's father has six times more money than Vince McMahon. Yeah, but Tony Khan's father didn't make his money in the wrestling business. He made it elsewhere. Vince McMahon made his money in the wrestling business. Where did the uh, Where did James go? <sighs> I don't know where James went, everyone. Hopefully he shows up. Let me message him real quick. No, oh, here he is. Oh, where did you go, James? Huh? I think Don Stevens hacked me. Did Don Stevens hack you? So, <laughs> uh, go ahead, carry on. What was he going to say? Well, the, the guy that said that uh Tony Khan's father has six times the amount of money that Vince McMahon has. Well, yeah, that's great, but Shad Khan didn't make his money in the wrestling business. Vince McMahon did. <laughs> yeah. He's not finished. Okay. He left another comment. Also, going to say this now, about WWE, within 8 to 14 months, you're going to see a huge change in the ranking from WWE and AEW because I will say this, AEW will be the number one in the world before you know it. So he's predicting within the next 8 to 14 months, AEW is going to be the number one wrestling company in the world. <laughs> okay. They've been around for five years, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, we got our first per, uh, super chat for the evening. It's Rex Gardner. Thank God, Rex, you're here. Sadly, Renee, wrestling now resembles video game style wrestling. Yes, it does. No idea if anything will change soon as for mad fans. Ken gets mad in a chat if you don't say hello. <laughs> he does. <laughs> who's, who's Ken? Is that the guy? Ken... Ken... DQ, can no DQ, and it, like he, he said some shit about me, and I just kind of ignore him. Well, I don't ignore him. I appreciate that he watches every week. I do. Um, I really do because he does tune in every show. But he 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 can get on some people's nerves, and I have said to him a few times, I'm like you know, I love the fact you tune in every week, but just be respectful to everyone in the chat, and that's all I ask for. Like people to be respectful to each other because we've got a great fan base, and you know, I just want everyone to get along. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I will also say this well before we uh, get the next one. Uh, not to be a monocleist, uh, monarchist, but best wishes to uh, Princess Kate. She's got cancer, so she's going through chemo. Oh, jeez. So oh. that's why she, she's been quiet. And I know people's had conspiracy theories saying Prince William's having an affair with this other lady and they're having a baby and like that. But uh, I think she went in for... Um, some surgery in the stomach and at first they thought it was like non-cancerous but apparently it is now and that's why i mean i watched the video of her and like sh she was always like skinny right but you, she's like real gaunt in the face and stuff okay and uh you know best wishes obviously you know she's not gonna know i exist but you know end of the day she's only like 42 
well, three young kids. Yeah. Well, so, um, yeah. Prayer, prayers go out to Princess Kate. Uh, hope we speed recovery. Um, going to the next super chat. Is Tony Khan worse at running a Fed than Dixie Carter? Well, he spends a lot more money than Dixie Carter. Yeah, I mean, I like Tony. Tony, to me, as a fellow wrestling fan, he comes across as just this really, really passionate fan. But I think he's a little bit way over his head and he needs to put the right people into place. Uh, Dixie Carter, I don't know the woman. Uh, she's welcome to come on the show, but I same. I think she was over in over her head running the wrestling company. You need don't want to praise Vince, but you need to be like a Vince McMahon to run a wrestling promotion. Let's be honest. That's it. You can't you can't be worked by workers. Okay, and if I could sit down with Tony, because listen, I'm a guy that doesn't need the money. All right, and I and I could sit and I've been around wrestling my entire life. All right, my father was an orphan, and he made millions and millions of dollars in the wrestling business. He started off as a wrestler. He learned his trade. He learned from all the promoters that he worked for, and then he adapted that. He came back to his home his home territory adapted everything he learned from the from all the promoters from the Vern Gagne's to the Jim Barnett's to the Vince McMahon seniors to the Bill Watts uh, uh, no 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 he he, uh, he he wrestled with Bill Watts Bill Watts right. were, yeah, yeah yeah him and Bill Watts were wrestlers at the same time um, so he learned from all the old school promoters uh so and then you know he taught me what he learned so if i could just sit with tony khan for like just give me a month and i don't need a dime and i just sit with them because he and i are the same age and then and uh i don't even want a dime mm -hmm. Anyway, serious question. Now I'll ask a goofy ass one later. Renee, as a recovering addict, how do you feel about Jim Cornette saying DDTP should find something better to do than helping loser trick it? What? What the fuck did he just say? I'm sorry, did Connie. Did you just say that? Uh, Connie, you're entertaining, but honestly, God, that's a shitty thing to say. DDP is a fucking saint. What a fucking low life piece of dog shit comment to say. How many, lives did, how many lives did DDP saved? It's not that. It's just, what the fuck is wrong with Corny? Seriously, what the fuck is wrong with you? God damn, that just pissed me the fuck off. Why did you say that? That's just, that's almost DDP's a saint. And, like, I know, sadly, Scott Hall has since passed, but you remember what Scott Hall was like before he started with DDP, how he did turn his life around. Yeah, Obviously, but then, we, but then we, he fell off the wagon, you know? Yeah. But, well, I mean... Uh, Jake, look at Jake. Look at Jake. Uh, for Cornet to say that, I mean, just... What a low-life piece of fucking dog shit comment to say. Yeah. Okay, I gotta get to talk to something else. Something else. I tune in every episode to mention me. Hey, James. Vert Stappen to Aston Martin. Honda loves Max and Norris to Red Bull in 226. What do you think? That's all gibberish to you, isn't it? It is <laughs> gibberish. No. So it, it, it's Formula One Motorsports. Um, so Max Verstappen, basically... He's the he's currently the Hulk Hogan. I'll, I'll explain some wrestling terms. Max Verstappen's currently the Hulk Hogan of Formula One. He's winning the world championship every year at the minute, okay. and the current season's in play, and he's dominating. He's beating everyone on the roster basically. 
Um, so he's with Red Bull. Red Bull um, is now the number one team. Aston Martin has got loads of money. They're actually owned by a Canadian, funny enough. Uh, Lawrence Stroh, uh, wealthy Canadian, very, very wealthy. And he's one of these, uh, he's got a son who actually drives for him, Lance Stroh. Um, money's on, now here's one. So I think I mentioned it the other week. So the team owner, or, uh, the team boss of Red Bull, Christian Horner, he's married to Jerry Halliwell, one, uh, the former Spice Girl, Ginger Spice. Uh-huh. And he was caught messaging this lady. I don't know if she was, he was sexting or messaging the lady. Uh, well, apparently, allegedly, Max's father, Joss Verstappen, who also used to be a driver a few years back, apparently he was messaging the same woman. And now he's upset with Christian Horner, the team boss, because it's like, hey, I've been messaging this woman as well. What the fuck? So I don't know if there's a bit of friction between them two now. And with Max winning every season, does he want to look for a new challenge? Possibly. Um, so we shall see. Norris, no, I think Norris just signed a new contract with McLaren. But, you know, if the money's on the table, then I'm sure he would love to jump to a Red Bull. So uh, that's my opinion on it anyway. Mm. Okay. Let's see. He was talking about Buff Bagwell, Dark Side of the Ring. Right. What a fuck! What? So, bas you... so basically, yeah. Corn Cornet thinks because you fucked up, you don't deserve a second chance, or you don't deserve any help. Is that basically what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just this low class. I mean, like, oh, what a fucking redneck, low life piece of dog shit comment to make. Fucking horseshit. horseshit. I, I've I've said many times him being a Democrat is a fucking work. There's no way he's a Democrat. <laughs> no. So, um, there's no way it's a fucking work. Um I don't know. I believe everyone needs help. Everyone needs a second chance. Yeah, don't get me wrong, people should own up to the to their own they should have resp own up to their own shit they have done. I believe that. Yeah. I believe in accountability, but it does not mean that that person doesn't deserve a helping hand. And a lot of these wrestlers I grew up watching, like Buff Bagwell, big fan of Buff Bagwell back in the day, uh, like your Scott Hall, your DDPs. So, yeah, um, that's a shitty thing from Cornet. Like I said, love Cornet's podcast, entertaining. The person, though, I don't think he'd be someone I'd like to hang out with. But then again, he doesn't hang out with anyone. So there you go. No, no. I think there's a reason why he doesn't go to conventions. Was probably scared that someone's going to kick the living shit out of him. But the thing is, he's got his own personal attorney following him around everywhere, Stephen P. and U, to back him up, right? So, I mean... Listen, was Corny ever a wrestler? No, he took one bump off a scaffold and blew out both his knees. And I even heard him saying that once he blew out his knees, he was walking around the dress ring looking for pain pills. Right? Okay? So imagine if you were an actual wrestler, Jimmy, and you have to do this night after night after night. Yeah. You're going to get hooked on pills because unless yeah. you're living under a rock, uh, North America has this thing called an opiate epidemic going on all right i was um i was watching um i love watching the old uh tough enough episodes yeah they're great by the way if ever you get a chance to watch them they are, they are fun because uh, it was during your time when it all happened but anyway season two there was this one girl um i forgot i think her name was alessia or alexia it was something like that and this is like episode three episode four and where she took that many bumps and it was hurt in the back she went to a doctor and she's like she was already asking for like pain pills she was like please give me them and that was just like and she's not even a full-time wrestler she's in a reality show trying to become a wrestler and she already was like i need pills need pills yeah. so imagine doing that 300 you know 300 odd days a year year after year mm. i can't imagine it I remember when I was working with the Dudley boys, right? 
um, I was going through a table every night. And, you know, Bubba Dudley, he had a tendency of not taking care of you and slamming you in the back of your neck in rushing spots. And I made the mistake of limping, limping in front of Vince McMahon. And Vince looks at me, what's wrong with you? You know what I mean? So, and there was so much paranoia back then about losing your your spot or losing your job because there was only one game in town. You understand? So that's why guys would take shit because they didn't want to show the office that you were injured. Okay? Yeah. That's why so many guys got hooked on the painkillers. Yeah. So, yeah. That's the thing. I don't judge wrestlers for their addictions because I've never been in the ring. But I, the closest thing I had to a bump was when I fell off a roof and fractured me back and me T12 from my spine. And I'm very anti drugs. But that's just for myself. If other people want to do it, then that's entirely up to them. But I remember when I was in that hospital and they offered me morphine. I was like, yes, please. Yeah. Because it helped. Yeah, yeah. And extremely addictive. Mm. Cool. Um, got another, got a story, a bit of a weird story here before we get next super chat. Okay. The Westboro Baptist Church has announced plans to picket WWE Raw due to the Janelle Grant lawsuit. Say that again. The Westboro Baptist Church in Topeka, uh, Kansas, I believe. Okay. Announced that it would be picketing. The uh, April 29th Raw show in Kansas City. This is due to the Janelle Grant lawsuit and the charges in the suit as it relates to the Fintech man and the company. So I guess the church is going to be outside Raw and <laughs> picket line. Wow. That's going to be funny. Uh, apparently, they've done it in the past, though, like for some shows. So I guess they're just very, very anti WWE, but. WWE's been more PG than ever. Well, except from the Vince McMahon stuff, but compared to, to what it was like back in your day in the Ruthless Aggression era, like hot lesbian action, and like back in the Attitude era, WWE's pretty tame. Yeah. And it's by them. Well, I told you, man, like during the height of the um, Attitude era here locally, um, they got, WWF got kicked off local television here in the Maritimes. Like the spot that my dad's television show was on in Atlantic Canada, like yeah, they got kicked off that one hour slot on on, on Saturday evening, uh, Saturday like midday. And then when my dad, you know, this is in '99, my dad actually went and you know saw if he could get his old time slot back. The producer said, "No way, we want nothing to do with wrestling." Yeah. All right. Jim just made his wife BF. Okay, well, hold on. Jim, Jim's just mad. His wife's boyfriend likes to smoke weed and drink Seven Up like female Japanese wrestling and jerks it to CM Pink. He's a loser who got fired. Okay, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> tell, 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 tell us how you really, really feel, Rex. Tell us how you really feel, Rex. <laughs> um, I mean, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Jim has been fired from every company he's been at. He has. I mean, his own got folded, like uh, Smoky Mountain. But yeah, but that wasn't his money. No, it was the fucking uh, music guy. What's it called um, uh, Rick Rubin? That's right. Yeah. Rick Rubin, he was, a re he was a huge wrestling fan. And, uh, yeah, he took Rick Rubin's money and spent it all. Mm. But here's the thing. He always goes off on ECW, Jim Cornette does, but, you know, to this day, you'll still hear ECW. Like, oh, yeah. You know, you can put former ECW wrestler on a poster and that might you know create interest mm -hmm. you, you put former smoky mountain wrestling wrestler 
on a poster. Nobody's going to know who the fuck it is. Well, I've said in the past, like, there's some ACW stuff I loved, but there's a lot of it I just can't watch. Right. But I could name you, like, some ACW matches from the past, especially, like, you Rob Van Damme for Jerry Lynn classics. Yeah. I don't know any Smoky Mountain matches. I don't know that's just me being ignorant. I can't tell you a great Smoky Mountain match. You might know one, but I don't. I don't know any. Um, hey, guys. Renee, do you believe that the changes that AEW have to make can be overnight fixes, or will it take months or even years to fix? <sighs> You just have to tone things down, you know. Um, to take less risks. I mean, if you're gonna take big bumps, make it mean something. Sell it, you know. If like that big bump that Darby took off the ladder through the glass table, that should have been like an ambulance job. Like fucking have the medics come out and stretcher him out. And have that last, like, you know, a month. And then, you know, you're just wasting all these big bumps. And then, you know, it, it, it means nothing. Right? Yeah. It's, um, I mean, someone uh, we mentioned, obviously, some of the money that's going out of the company. And like people said, well, why are you interested in the money? I'm well, basically, if he runs out of money, if you're not going to have any more AEW, as simple as that. If they're just losing money, but someone did actually ask us, like, we should actually go through the roster one day and say who to keep and whatever. But at the same time, I, I would feel horrible doing that because I'm basically saying to AW, yeah, fire this person, don't give them a job. So it's kind yeah. of shitty. Yeah, that's kind of a shitty thing to do. Yeah, right. But listen, it's Tony's money, or well, it's Tony's dad's money. And obviously, Tony's dad loves his son because he's basically just handing over his fortune for him to live out his dream, right? With these big money contracts, do we agree? I would imagine they pay well, but probably not AEW well, especially like some of the big contracts. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Your Roman Reigns, your Seth Rollins, your Orton's, for example, they're getting looked after, obviously. But the rest of the card, I don't know, perhaps they're doing okay, but when you hear these big contracts AEW is offering, I mean, it is flashbacks to back in the day, WCW signing Nash and Hall and, you know, Brett, for example, to these big contracts. You, you saw the amount of people that jumped heads, uh, jumped over. Yeah. Do you, because one of the big ones now is Drew McIntyre, now, Drew McIntyre is on his way to WrestleMania. He's going to be facing Rollins for the uh, world title. Yeah. Apparently, there's still some debate if he's signed that new contract or what. So I, I don't know if WWE is giving him the title to say, you know, we're, we're going to make you the top guy of Raw, you know, stay with us. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a tactic, negotiation tactic. But when these wrestlers see these big contracts Tony Khan's offering, then surely they've got to be thinking, yeah, I'm going to entertain that offer. You would think. Depends how business minded for you. But here's another thing. Tony takes care of the hotels. He takes care of the rental cars. Fights for Osprey. <laughs> yeah. Uh the food. Um I don't know. They only have to wrestle, what, one day a week? Pretty much. I mean, they've got like two or three shows, but the majority of them shows is separate people. So, yeah, mainly like once a week. Once a week. Um, I don't know exactly how the merchandise deal is. Because do, um, do those guys have their own pro wrestling tea store, the majority of those guys? Like, I know Punk, he had his own pro wrestling tea store, right? He did. Um, I don't know how that works out now, merchandise with them. Um, I don't know. Mm. And then, for WWE, 
you gotta pay for your rental cars you gotta pay for you gotta pay for your hotels you gotta pay for all your food on the road i don't know do they still have to follow a a a, a, a dress code because <laughs> when i was there you had to follow a dress code and if you were caught not wearing this cas you got fined five hundred dollars don't know um well i would say it's a bit more laid back now fence is gone but then again wasn't it triple h who brought up the idea for, for everyone to wear suits because he loved wearing suits was it him that was johnny ace oh it was johnny ace yeah right that was johnny ace's idea yeah i mean you've got the best idea why not wear wwe Track suits. Track suits, just like they do in Japan. It's the best advertisement there is. You're going into airports all the time. If you have a track suit with the logo in the back and the logo on like on the pants, what better advertise advertisement there is than that, right? Also, everyone, if this video hits one thousand likes, then we shall bring out Cafe de Rene track suits. Yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, keep on Tony Khan just for a little bit longer. So, um, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Yeah. So, after the incident at All In, you know, with um, CM Punk, so it says, according to those spoken to, Jack Perry was sent home after All In at Wembley. He never heard back from Tony Khan. He apologized and he kept texting them ab about it. He never meant to cause any trouble and was sorry. He did hear from the company through lawyers and then talked and he apologized to Khan. What he's doing now, apparently, in Japan is a storyline that's going to lead to an eventual return. But I also heard from a different report that Tony Khan was like really pissed off because this eventually led to the um, departure of CM Punk and he was really pissed off at uh, Jack Perry about it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. You know what else? I guess um sasha banks during like one of her interviews said eventually she's going to go back to wwe because she has some unfinished business yeah if i'm tony khan and i just signed you to a multi-million dollar deal i think it's a five-year deal but she's got an option to leave after three I okay think. but here she is talking about eventually going back to the other company like how fucking pissed off would you be? I feel sorry for the guy. He's I really getting. Do. I do generally feel sorry for him. He's he's a wrestling fan, you know, who happens to have you know a wealthy dad and all the power to him. You know, I wish I was in that position. I don't know if I'd start a wrestling business because I don't want to lose money. But <laughs> he's passionate. Okay, he's living every wrestling fan's dream. I would love to run my own promotion. Um, I know I couldn't do it, but the problem is, wrestlers have got a different mindset to the fans like myself and like Tony can, and they can see we'll take advantage of this guy. And yeah, I'm telling you, he reminds me of Jim Barnett, all right. He needs an Ole Anderson, a guy who understands the wrestling business, but is not a mark and is not intimidated by anybody. And he'll lay the law down and fucking has, you know, is not intimidated by anybody. And you know what I mean? That's what, that's what Tony needs. How many, of those, right how many of those people's about these days, though? Was that? How many of them type of wrestlers are about these days? I have no problem doing it all. Mm. I'd have no problem at all because, <laughs> one, I don't need the business financially. B, I don't care if to make any friends. Yeah. I didn't get into this business to make friends. I know that we're not friends. <laughs> we yeah, just happen to do the podcast together. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so some good oh. news for a change. Well, hold on. Let's get to one of these super chats. Okay. 
Will Paul be on tonight, Les? Nope. Paul will be on in about two weeks. He's going to take a couple weeks off, and then he'll be back on. Yeah. But this Monday, we're going to try something a little different. We're going to have returning, two returning guests, one being Robbie McAllister from the Highlanders, and two... Tank Tolan from the Dicks. So we're going to have Highlander Dicks. <laughs> Scottish Dicks. <laughs> Highlander Dick for for this Monday. Okay, what was your question there, uh, Emerson? Um, oh, I was also say that Cinemax is returning, so next Tuesday, possibly. <laughs> so... Hold on a second. Okay, hold on. You guys said you cancelled, but now... I was cancelling it, and I think that's... <laughs> I was gunsling. I said the Paul said Paul's not working. I'm like, you know, no hard feelings. We're still friends, but I don't think we'll make it work. And I was like, I don't want it to end. I like, I want to do it. I want this to succeed, but we can't put out what one... I think the last time we've done an episode was like Halloween. <laughs> so um, it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, James. Let's do this. So I think we're going to be bringing it back Tuesday. So I am not promising anything, everyone. Okay. So, um, also, Rob, if you're out there, buddy, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I think he sent the link like at, uh, I think it was 11 o'clock, but I'm on Atlantic time, so it was probably 10 o'clock on your time, but 11 o'clock in my time, and I'm usually in bed by 10 o'clock. So we're going to have to organize it a day into an advance and have a specific time. So I was supposed to be on RBD's One of a Kind podcast, but we're going to have to reschedule and be more specific with times. Yeah. Uh, Bash Nagata. What's Bash, Bash Nagata have saying here? Fun question time, Renee. What would you do, have done if an opponent shits himself in the ring? I start laughing and say, go home. Uh, my father actually, my father actually told me a funny story about he was wrestling a very famous wrestler out here called the Cuban Assassin, and uh, the Cuban had ate chili for supper that day, and uh, my dad went to pick him up for a body slam, and as soon as he had him up there, he could smell it, and then. Dropped him and he could hear him shit himself. <laughs> yeah, he was a uh, he was a shitty finish. <laughs> did, did you did you hear about the rumor, the uh, WrestleMania 13 main event between Taker and Sid? No. So the finish is when Taker gets Sid up for the uh, tombstone. Okay. Well, apparently, Sid sh shit himself. So when. Taker had sit up for the tombstone. He basically had shit like in his face. Oh, basically, God. that's the rumor. I don't know if it's true. It's a bit of an urban legend. Okay, but that's. I'm sure people in the chat has heard the story. If you did, please like the please hit the like button. But it, it's a it's a it's an urban legend. <laughs> that's a pretty shitty finish. Shitty finish. Uh. Oh, Smitty, thank you very much for the donation. We appreciate you very much. What else we got? James Jonah has to set up a MGM management management of this channel. What does that mean? I guess he wants us to step up managing the channel. Okay. I think we're doing okay. I think we're doing okay. Could be bigger, but so could every other podcast sometimes some channels takes more time those i mean obviously we've seen the growth of maven and all the power to maven we love maven and we couldn't wish it for a nicer guy same as stevie we love stevie and they're having great success but some ch what well, their channels are different to ours i've always said especially maven and maven said this himself he's he, the guy who runs his channel who's doing an unbelievable job is portraying Maven as a YouTuber that happens to talk about wrestling, whereas in Renee is a wrestler talking on YouTube. It's weird, but that's the terminology they've used. Mm. Uh, but 
Yeah, I mean, wish we was bigger. Um, I mean, I, I guess I could step up in some ways. I'm trying my best. I mean, I'm still learning every day. This ain't my full time job. I wish it was, but <laughs> well, it ain't. Um, but you know, channels grow at their own pace. Um, but I will say, I'm not being braggadocious, but there are some Hall of Fame, Hall of Famers who's got podcasters and people who has wrestled in North America for the past 10, 15 years in front of a North American audience all that time. And we are doing better numbers than them. So we could do better maybe, but we're doing okay. We're doing okay. But there's always room for growth, and we appreciate all the suggestions, and uh, we're trying. We're trying. Let's see what Rex is. Uh, hey, Renee, which person in the locker room was seen as the locker room clown? Um, who? What did you say? I said that's a good question. Now, back in the day, you had like your own hats, for example, right. and your bulldogs, but... Mark Jindrak. Jindrak? Mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mark Jindrak, man. He was the fucking best. Oh, God. Uh, I'm trying to think well, of anybody else. Did he do pranks or just goofiness in general? Just goofiness in general. You know, he didn't hurt anybody's feelings. He was like, you know, just just great. Just fucking funny. He was a lovely guy. He was... He was... He was Someone you thought would be a fun guy, but was just really boring. Not someone who was a bully or being an asshole, but someone who you thought, oh, that great, that guy should, would be a great guy to hang out with. But turns out, man, that guy's just like really bland and really boring. Mm. Nobody really. All right. Uh, no. Someone said someone said Lance Storm. <laughs> Lance Storm. <laughs> I think I think Lance was actually more entertaining off camera than he was on camera. From what from what I've heard. Uh, he just, just uh, I just see him as like a, a police officer. Like if he wasn't a wrestler, I'd see him as a as a cop. Somebody. Just really serious all the Just time. Very serious, and yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, thank you for the. Oh, was that a spider? Tarantula. E. Thank you, Ben Quiznell, for the uh, donation. Have you seen the videos of spiders like shedding their skins? No. Man, I come across some random stuff on TikTok, and it amazes me. But you watch like a, vi a video of like a spider. Obviously, it's sped up. Yeah. But it'll be the video from like so like the line on the back, and you see him like pushing the shell off, like the old skin. Yeah. And then coming out of it, it's, it's amazing to watch. Like you know, I, I I get amused. It's like now, like me and me boys, there's these videos on their um, fucking TikTok, and it'll start off with like an egg. And all of a sudden, be like a big, massive uh, roach or like a grass, uh, what fucking uh, leaf bug or whatever. Uh -huh. I'm not, like fucking bugs, man. I'm amazed, like the evolutions of bugs. I don't know why, because I fucking hate bugs, but mm. they just amaze me. Mm. Ain't TikTok getting banned in America, by the way? What? TikTok? Apparently, I think they've just passed a law where it's getting banned in America. Well, you know, there's like. It's like a conspiracy theory that like the Chinese are using it to spy on Americans, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that to be true. I mean, I guess if they want to buy it, they might, but to be fair, if there's something America could do with banning, I would probably say uh guns to the public. <laughs> I think that's probably a bigger issue. <laughs> Was that? I would say banning like firearms to the public. I think that would be a bigger issue to ban at the minute. Not <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> People's gonna think like I'm this hard, like this far left. I've been accused of being far right and far left. I'm like, no, I'm fairly neutral. I just like believe in common sense. And I'm like, yeah, I don't believe the public should have access to like firearms. <laughs> I think it's pretty dangerous. I don't know, man. If shit hits the fans, like <clears throat> the fact that our government has banned all guns 
it's kind of scary because what happens if we come under attack? Like, I'd like to be able to have some firearms to protect myself. You know what I mean? So, what you got it banned as well? Huh? So it's banned in the Canada as well? Yeah. Right, because I didn't know that you see, because I just presume like North America, a lot of your um, laws were pretty much the same. You see, but we've uh, been banned for a while. Don't get me wrong, knife cut, knife crimes through the roof, um, especially in like the big cities like London and uh, Liverpool. Um, but yeah, I mean, people's calling me stupid, but they, uh, I don't make light of this. But you know, I can drop my kids off to school and I know they're safe. Yeah. So I'm just saying that. Maybe stricter rules on who. Oh, definitely stricter rules at the very least. Yeah, stricter rules, but to ban them entirely. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I kind of like, I kind of like to be able to have a gun for my own protection, you know. But anyway, anyway. Um. Uh, did we just, for example, shorts are inconsistently put out. They're low fidelity. Jonah posts more of his own content to this channel than CDR. I'm just saying. What's your opinion on that there, James? Um, yeah, but I mean, Jonah's got his own gig, and I'm happy for Jonah. And Jonah's doing really well. Jonah's just passed 10 million views, so congratulations to Jonah. Um, that's Jonah's contract on his channel, and like Jonah does help out with this channel, but um, but we don't ask Jonah to help out all the time. That's your time if we need help, then yeah, we'll ask Jonah. But Jonah's thing is rewind, recap, relive. Everyone, please head over there and subscribe. So we don't ask him to make videos all the time if for example uh because i haven't spoken to john for a few days actually um sometimes i'll message him i'll send him a clip like oh can you make a couple of shots out of this and he'll make it you know in his time but jonah's concentrating more on his channel than our channel and that's because he wants to and i guess we're happy for him to do so as well so yeah yeah and jonah's been a big help big help he teaches me uh like, for example, that thank you vid that I just posted, well, he got at me. Like, I did that all on my own. That was the first video that I posted on my own with the thumbnail and everything. And Jonah um, led me through the whole process. So I'm very grateful for Jonah. Um, Renee, can you do the face that Sapolsky gave you? Oh, so um, I guess Gabe Sapolak or Sapolsky is going to go visit James and uh, uh, Paul went in school. Right. Yeah, I guess he does. He work for NXT or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think he's like a scout for NXT. And Paul told me that he's he's going to his school to go check out some of his talent so that's pretty cool yeah yeah i'm not a, i'm not a big fan of that sapolsky guy just my first interaction with him i mean you go to his show you compliment him and then he gives you this face like, like disgust i'm thinking to myself what the fuck's wrong with you like, here I am complimenting you, and you're looking at me like I have fucking turds hanging out of my fucking mouth. Like, yeah. So it never interested you to work with our H then? Raw. 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 No. Uh, before we get the next Super Chat, Renee, we've got some good news for a change. Okay. Uh, incredible news as Maurice has announced that she is tumor-free following surgery. Uh, oh. She posted on Instagram, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm overwhelmed by the amount of support I'm getting from family, friends, and fans all over the world. To all my women, please keep being your own advocate and trust yourself always. So finally, some good news. Well, congratulations. Um, Maurice was always, always a really good friend of mine, and I'm so glad that she's in good health could happen to a better person so i'm very grateful that she's doing okay um, what 
else do we got here? Robocop Cinemarks episode. Can I Hell get yeah. a dude, dude? Can I get a dude, dude, Renee? Uh, maybe not right now. You can't just. I'll I'll give it to you eventually. Just not right now. I can't just give it to you like you know. Just wait for it. You gotta wait for it. Special time. It's all about timing. What? Rebel, Rebel, Rebel Cop definitely in the future. I promise. I love Rebel Cop. Matt Escobedota, best wrestling podcast. Well, thank you very much, Dave. Dave. Keep up the good work, boys. Hopefully, we see some new special guests in the future. Yes. Well, we're gonna have returning guests this Monday. Uh, Highlander Robbie McAllister joined by Tank Tolan, one half of the Dicks. <laughs> How stupid of a name was that for a fucking tag team? The Dicks. What, what was the original name? The Swinging Dicks? I, I think, think it was going to be called the Swinging Dicks. <laughs> yeah. I think t- I, I'm, I haven't watched that Tank episode for a while, and it's a great episode, everyone. Please, for preparation. Go back and watch that tank episode because it's a really good episode. And I, I forgot who was it approached him with a name. I'm sure it was Michael Hayes. I think it was I'm gonna have to go back. I think it was Stephanie. I don't know if it was Stephanie. I think Stephanie actually was a fan of him. But it might have been Stephanie, but I know Stephanie was a fan of him. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if it was someone else gave a name, but I think Tank basically said when once I heard the, the name was like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll you're gonna be. Him we'll find him on Monday when we have him on. So that's gonna be a very good. That's gonna be a very good episode. Um, uh, I want to say something. What did I want to say? Um, uh, as for new, new guests in the future, I have reached out to a few people. Um. Some old guests, some legends. Hopefully, uh, they'll be coming on this summer. Uh, but I have reached out to some new guests as well. So I'm going to try and arrange them. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to see if we can get some fresh faces under the cafe. So uh, stay tuned, everyone. Keep hitting that like button and subscribe. And like I said before, the uh, bigger the channel, the more attention we get. And obviously, the bigger the numbers, it makes it easier to appeal to guests to come on because they know we've got like a fantastic audience. So, yeah, please hit like, subscribe, and support us. Speaking of writers, you know how um, Paul said that Big Dick Johnson was going to come on eventually? He did an interview with, um, what's that guy from Ireland? Uh, Maurice. Maurice. Do you know how much his yearly pay was for the writers back then? The WWE? That's a good question. That's either going to be really high or really low. I don't know. Take a guess. 50K? 24K a year. Shit. That's what, that's what their yearly guarantee was. 24 grand a year. And does the writers travel? Do they stay in Connecticut? Oh, they travel, but they travel as well. They travel on the on the jet, and I think like all their um, expenses are paid and stuff, like their hotels and stuff. I hope so. But yeah, twenty four grand a year is what, what your pay was. Fuck man, that was one of my dream jobs. Uh, I, I've now changed my mind. Twenty four k. So what if that's the base salary? What kind of bonuses? What what what? What kind of bonuses they would have to achieve? What would they would have to achieve to actually get a bonus? I don't what, know, sky high one. ratings or what? I, I guess that's why I'd love to have them on here to find out exactly how that whole, you know, how that worked, like their, their pay structure and how they made more money. And, you know, I'm sure like lead writers would make more money, right? But yeah. Well, I hope they paid him well because do you remember when they used to have him on screen and he would just be naked basically yeah i guess he got paid like an extra 500 or a thousand dollars every time he was on screen Dumb. yeah uh renee are you going to wrestlecon in philadelphia on april 5th i have not heard anything yet 
Uh, I will be going to New York at the end of April to the wrestling universe. I think that's uh, a wrestling. Oh, the, the shop. Yeah, the shop. Yeah, I've heard of it, yeah. In Queens. And I'll also be doing a show there. But um, if there's a promoter that wants to bring myself or myself and Larry Zissons, Rob Conway, and Sylvan, just contact uh, Cafe Rene at is it gmail.com? Uh, Yahoo.com. Cafe Rene at Yahoo.com. <laughs> Cafe yeah. Renee at yahoo.com or Rene Dupree booking at hotmail.com and uh, we'll sort something out. Someone said bring James to WrestleCon. If you, if you just want to pay for my expenses, please. I would love to come <laughs> to uh, America. <laughs> Rex! Oh, nice one, Neil. Oh, is that Melina? Yeah, she was hot back in the day. I had a crush on Melina. Mm. I think I had a crush on every diva. Of course you did. Yes. In the Indies and Japan, was there any women you saw that impressed you and can see becoming big in the business? Oh, shit, all kinds. Uh, Suri Kondu. I first met her when she was 18, and I met her when I was working for the Hustle promotion. She was trained by uh, Tajiri. Uh, she was really good and julia uh i think she was with stardom but she had a falling out and i think she is switching over to a different promotion with somebody else i don't know exactly um yeah and then there's a uh, tecla Hmm. Tekla, she uh, she works for Stardom right now. She she she's really good. She's from Austria, and of course, Mas Slamovich. She's on her way up. She uh, I think she still works for Game Changer Wrestling, and I think she still has a contract with TNA. And that's expiring in October, I believe. And I heard she might be in talks with some larger companies. But uh, the sky's the limit for her. She's a little Russian workhorse, is what I like to call her. And, uh, yeah. Well, what, one of the girls you mentioned ages ago, uh, Julia, looks like there's going to be a little bit of a bidding war for her coming up as well. Um from what I've seen, looks like she might be heading to WWE, but yeah, I think this could be a bit of a bidding war for her. Yeah, yeah, because she's um, she has a very unique look and uh, incredibly talented. So, uh, what else we got? Goldberg forgets wrestling is a work, don't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's still real to him. Damn it. Brid Shitty Slam in Ottawa. And what's this? Is that, a, is that an indie show? Bridge Shitty Slam in September. I guess so. Mark, uh, making my mark. Okay, making my mark. Oh, wait. He's got to send another one. Masha Slamovich met her. She comes to Iowa a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So was Iowa, yeah. Yeah, she's a uh, she's a hell of a talent, hell of a hell of a wrestler, and a really really good friend of mine. So uh, I think the world of her. Any other stories? Any other happenings? Um, yeah. So um, we spoke about the uh, Hall of Fame uh, inductions the other week. Who who looks like has got a big say in uh, what's going to be happening in the Hall of Fame? But someone who looks like is not going to the Hall of Fame now is uh, Bray Wyatt. Um, apparently it's been held back due to an upcoming uh, Peacock documentary. So according to the Wrestling Observer, so take it how you will, uh, this had something to do with the dishes. <clears throat> sorry. This had something to do with a decision not to induct Wyatt into the Hall of Fame this year. 
that this year they are going to do a big documentary for him and we'll induct him later. So I guess they're going to do a big documentary on him and I guess induct him possibly next year instead, which I don't know why. Well, I thought that they'd induct him with his uncle and his father because Mike Rotunda and Barry Wyndham are being inducted, right? Yeah, U.S. Express. Yeah, so you think maybe they'd all be inducted together. But I guess that's just the way things goes. Uh, we got another one here from Zimzu. Thoughts on Shayna Baszler being allowed to work GCW, Bloodsport oh, yeah, yeah. Mania Week versus Masha. Ah, more to come, allegedly. Silesia Sparks was on this week's TNA. Oh, great. So looks like maybe the cafe helped give some people some exposure. Uh, James? Huh? Star Maker. Uh, really? <laughs> I know I know I'm gonna get an angry comment from Bolin now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both had Marsha on here and we both had Silesia Sparks, but great, that's great to hear. So hopefully they can uh they can bring on Mel- Melanie Havoc because she, she's another great talent from Quebec. Hopefully she get the, her on too. That's great. I want to bring on some more Canadian talent on here, female and male, and to give them a little bit of exposure and, and uh, give back. You know, the wrestling business has been very good to me, you know, and uh, I've done very well for myself. And I credit the wrestling business for all my uh, financial success. And uh, I feel it's time for me to give back. And uh, if I can use this platform to help give other young wrestlers, up and coming wrestlers, exposure uh, to help them uh, live out their dreams, it's the least I can do. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Bridge City Slam is an indie show based off more old school wrestling. I met Angle last year at one in JP Harlow, who had done dark matches in AEW. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'll look them up and check them out. I really I really like the old school wrestling, so I'll try speaking of Speaking of previous guests, uh, obviously we had um, <clears throat> Kevin Matthews on. I think he might be like a producer in AEW now, but I think he had his first match on uh, Collision or Rampage, and he was actually up against uh, Shibata. Was he? Yeah. He actually contacted me about going to Alaska. Right. Yeah. But the problem is... <laughs> The prices of uh, flights from the Maritimes to Alaska are about three times the price from Maritimes to Tokyo. Doesn't make any sense. But it is what it is. So, how much is it to fly to Tokyo? Because obviously, um, your wife's just gone over now. Um, how much is it from your place to Tokyo? Well, they have gone up. Yeah. Um, they're about twenty five hundred for like, like a cheap ticket. But I know you, I, I can't fly economy anymore, so it's usually about six grand for me because I like to upgrade. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, how is she over there, by the way? If you don't mind me asking, um, she enjoying it over there. And how long has she been now over there? She left on Monday, and today is Friday. Friday, so what's that, four days? Uh, yeah, four or five days. Yeah, four or five days. Oops. And she comes back next Saturday. All right, so a couple of weeks then. A couple of weeks, yeah. Rex! Husey in chat, for some reason, keeps wanting to promote Keep It 100. We get it, lad, but you're Cafe Duvernay. You seem a little lost. Stop trying to look <laughs> out for clout and stop, man. Who's he? Who's he? 
By the way, I started watching this pod because of CV Chris Van Vliet. Yeah, man. Yes. We, uh, can't, we can't thank Chris Van Vliet more for all the exposure he gave us. He's the one that really kicked us off. So thank you, Chris Van Vliet. Thank you, fellow Canadian, for giving us a little bit of exposure. Yeah. We actually um, used his clip the other day, you know, like the Tony Khan clip. And um, it, I mean, Chris is one of the best in the business for when it comes to interviews. And uh, when I hope he didn't get the wrong impression, I don't think he did. When I said this hasn't aged well, that was because what Tony said hasn't aged well. Nothing to do with Chris at all. It was all what Tony said, you know, about contracts and shit like that. Right. But no, I like Chris. Chris is uh, Chris is generally a good dude, so uh, yeah. I like Chris. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, going back to the other one about who's he promoting. I mean. Uh, Oops. Uh, for a moment, I mean, yeah, man, just do that if you want. I mean, um, yeah, I don't think Keeping 100 needs any more subs. I think they're doing pretty well. Um, all the power to them, Conan and uh, Disco. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, so let's see. I've got another news here. Uh, Goldberg again. <laughs> Goldberg! Goldberg. Um, so, yeah, so... He's on about uh, Brett. He says, I can only apologize to Brett for so long. So, uh, quote here, this guy was one of the best ever. I was enthralled with him. I didn't idolize him by any stretch. I don't idolize anyone <laughs> except yourself. Right. Uh, but I put up, but I put him up on that pedestal to be someone to uh, very much learn from. They put us together and I did learn a lot from the guy. I wouldn't trade the fat for the world. Now, here we go. We had a match, and unfortunately, during the match, something went wrong, and I kicked him in the head. It was very stiff. It was an accident. I never maliciously would try to hurt anyone. We'll get your thoughts on that, Renee. Let me rephrase that. I would never hurt anyone in a situation like that where they give me their trust. Renee, you've had experiences working with old Bill. <laughs> <laughs> He, he can't control himself. He has one speed go. You know what I mean? Like he never learned to work. He never. He, he, he he's not a good actor, right? He just it. This is an art form. What we do is an art form, and he never learned the art form. It takes years to master, and you know. And <laughs> he got pushed to the moon because he looked like he looked like a jacked up version of the hottest guy in the business at that time, which was Steve Austin. Am I right or wrong? Black trunks and bolded and everything. Exactly. So he got shoved to the top and he had charisma, you know, he had a great look. He was intense and he was raw. But unfortunately, he couldn't work. And he hurt a lot of guys, myself included. You know, he dislocated my collarbone. And to this day, I still have problems with it, you know. So it is what it is. As for as for Brett, do you think Brett should let it go by now? I'm, it's hard because it was essentially it's the kick that ended his career, basically. But do you think well, Brett? Because how long ago was it now? Ninety was it ninety nine or two thousand? So we're talking twenty four, twenty five years ago now. And you know I'm a Brett Hat Mac, but there's yeah, but Brett you had a now. well, you had a stroke. Yes, well, the train, right. yeah. That, probably led to that yeah which you know what i mean and i mean like for example look at those those uh saudi arabian matches like how much did sean get paid to do one of those saudi matches how much did bill goldberg get paid to do one of those saudi matches sean yeah. came out sean came out of retirement for that saudi match exactly so, yeah. Would you be pissed? Would anybody be pissed? Yeah. 
Yeah. Because how old was Brett when that happened? Let me have a quick look here. My uh, age? 42? Must have been something like that, yeah. And like like these days, there's a lot of wrestlers who still wrestle at that age. So it's born in 57, so it happened in 2000. So um, 43, yeah. 43. Yeah. And it would have been interesting. Like, I don't, I don't know if he would have went back to WWE after WCW folded, folded obvious for obvious reasons. But I mean, uh, do you remember when Hogan tried to do his show in Australia? Yeah. So he probably could have wrestled on that, made some money. You had these other promotions like the uh, WWA. I need to send you a video on the WWA <laughs> old wrestling all stars. Like uh, Mick McManus or whatever his name was, the guy who was running it, the stories he told. Oh man, he told a hilarious story about Stevie Richards and uh, Grandmaster Sexy Brian Christopher. Okay. So I think they was on a bus or something, and they was just and they got talking Grandmaster and uh, Stevie Ray on who was the fastest because I think both of them played football. So <laughs> the story goes they pulled up at a rest stop. As they went to take off, the guy, the promoter, says he described like this. As soon as they set off, Stevie Ray pulled up straight away, like because he'd done his hamstring. Uh-huh. And Brian Christopher just kept running and he didn't stop. And he <laughs> went head first into like a truck or some a park truck. <laughs> Apparently went head first into like a truck or, or a vehicle and like smashed the front of this truck or vehicle because he just didn't stop running. <laughs> yes everyone. The answer is A cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Oh why is Jake is... Go on, sorry. You know, Jake Ramirez has said any plans on having Mamie back on our show? Yes, of course. Um, maybe first week of April. Uh, yeah, Maven. I mean, Maven said loads of times. Whenever you need me, guys, just you know, drop me a line. So yeah. yeah. So probably we'll message him probably around first week of April if he's available. What's um, April next week, isn't it? Fuck. It's fucking flying by this year. Like we're in spring now. The weather's lovely because uh, since October it's done nothing but fucking rain so uh, and you know my job I'm outside all day mm. so now if it's like actually it's not don't worry there's the odd day or two where it's been sunshine but at least it's been dry mm. and yeah thank god we're in spring now well I've been in contact with this promoter in England wanting to put together a th- three to four week tour so maybe you and i will be meeting each other in person here coming in the spring or fall well our audience has our biggest uh, portion of our audience is uh, america thank you all our american cousins but number two is uh, great britain so if there's enough of you guys, we'll try and do a, a Cafe de Renee in a pub or a bar somewhere. Yeah. Okay. What's making my mark? Tony Khan and Dave Meltzer both burn my eyes when I see their names on an article or mention. Hurts just writing this. Meltzer is a five-star dud splash, and Tony Khan is a WCW fantasy, fantasy fanboy, Greenberg. Well, well, making my mark, you couldn't have explained it any better. Yes. Yeah. Also, I think, uh, what's the name of his podcast? Because uh, he sent in a couple of super chats. So I want to uh, put over his uh, podcast or his channel. So uh, just bring, up, uh, bring that back up, please, Renee. Uh, mark Out Mania. So, yeah, everyone, everyone who's watching, head over to Mark Out Mania and give them a subscribe. So, uh, thank you for the donations tonight, Mark Out Mania. Uh, making my mark, uh, really appreciate it. So, we're trying to spread the love. Um, well, apparently, Tony Khan, from what I've heard, he would fancy book in like I don't know if it's a basement or his home anyway, with like one of his friends back in the early 
you know late 90s early 2000s they would write down all these storylines and fantasy books so he's been a fan for a long time and he's been dreaming of this moment to finally happen yeah well it's happening it's happening how long do you think it's gonna last do you think he's gonna go until daddy pulls the plug I mean, like I said the other day, someone said it best. They think Tony is probably come to the realization I'm not going to make money out of this, but this is my dream. This is my passion project. And I mean, the well does run, run dry eventually, but he's got a bit of time to that well runs dry. So they've got loads of money. Yeah. But the question is, and the ratings are all right. Like they're not dog shit. They, you know they can be worse. Uh, you know they, they could be worse. They could be a lot better. We know that. But it all depends on the next TV deal. That it's that's the thing now with wrestling. You don't, especially AEW, they don't make their money from house shows because they don't do, run any. The money in wrestling now is from the TV deals or the in WWE's case streaming services with Netflix. So. It depends how this next TV deal goes and if they get a decent offer. But I hope they stay in business because it's a lot. It's another place for everyone to work and earn money. But I just wish it was ran better. Just have better people booking the show. Have a great finish guy. Obviously, Pat's dead now. He's the greatest finish guy of all time. But just have you know great bookers, great writers. A, a, you know, um, or just a great booker and a great finish guy. Couple of good agents and you sorted. But. I just think it's too much for Tony Khan. He should really just be the owner and put someone in control, like you said pre previously. Just put someone in control who knows what to do. And oh, I wonder. Well, yeah. there, there, there was somebody that said that the TV contracts were ninety million for AEW in America. Is there any truth to that? I don't know. We got to get on top of that. We got to find out exactly how much money AEW is bringing in from TNT and TBS. Because I think I know they moved from TNT to TBS, but TNT and TBS is the same company, isn't it? Yeah. I believe. And I, I, I might be wrong, but I still think it's the original deal like the five-year deal. I think that was the original deal. Huh. So they're looking for a new TV deal now because so, I think this one is still... Well, there you go. Ishmael's just put here. A TV contract is $45 million a year. So that's what he says. $45 million a year? Is that for both? I don't know. Uh, first in says $70 million now. Seventy million? Is it forty? Is it forty-five? Is it ninety? Is it seventy? We gotta it's, get some. We gotta get the the specifics here and find out exactly how much money. That's the coming. thing, isn't it? Because WWE is a publicly traded company, you get the numbers, right? But AEW is a private company, so they could say, "Oh, we're making two billion a year," and you don't know, right? They could right. be making two million a year for all we know, right? So, um, unless you actually know someone who's there who was actually part of the deals, uh, and like I said, you like to think Meltzer's in with them, but at the same time, Meltzer he's been he's been a lot more wrong than he has right on a lot of stuff, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll look into it, I'll try and do a bit of research, but I know that. The TV deal, I think, is up like soon or like this year, so they need a new deal. Mm. Well, if anybody knows, please write in the comments because I like to know specifics and yeah, I just want to know the truth. I want to know the truth, everybody. You can't handle the truth. I watched uh, that the other day. Was that? Did you watch that the other day? Yeah, a few good men. Great movie. <laughs> it's an awesome movie. I've, I see, do you know what I finally watched for the first time the other week? What? And I don't know if you watched it. Shawshank Redemption. Oh, man. My favorite I find, movie. 
based on based on a true story. I finally watched it the other week, and like for someone who loves movies, that's like embarrassing. In fact, it only took me till recently to watch that film, oh, and I watched it. I'm like, yeah, I can understand why people like this film. It's awesome. Yeah, you know, based on a true story too, man. Yeah. Uh, what Washman? Damn, making my mark. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the shout out. I had to send another super chat. You guys have great chemistry too. Love hearing the stories. Y'all and Chris Van Vliet, I watch on a weekly basis. Thanks again. Well, thank you, making my mark for all the support and the donations. We appreciate it very much. And we'll definitely uh, keep giving you some shout outs. Um, do we have any announcements about special guests appearing in the future or any uh, anything else we need to promote? Um. I'm trying to think now. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we still got the we still do the Patreon. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, thank you to everyone who's uh, been uh, signing up for that. So we do still put up WrestleMania and uh, match of the week. Uh, we recently done um, the Rockers for the Legion of Doom for the tag team titles, which was about a week or two before the infamous barbershop uh, segment uh, angle. Uh, we had fun reviewing that match. I think the match was like four minutes, but it was just a story that was told in that match. And like the aftermath, which was great. I, f- I think what we should do this weekend is uh, Jake v Macho Man this Tuesday in Texas. Oh, Tuesday in Texas. Is that when uh, they had the wedding and then like a reception and then this, the Cobra came out? That was SummerSlam. Well, that's, what's, that's what ignited the feud, yeah. But okay. the, the match... This Tuesday in Texas, the match is like real short, but it's everything that happens after the match. And like Jake slaps uh, Liz. And right. like Jake was fucking the, he was the, he was evil in that thing. And I mean, we spoke about it, didn't we, when we had Jake on the show? And like, man, what a heel. Uh, I think we should do that this weekend. So um, yeah, everyone, if uh, you're interested in signing up the Patreon, I think we might do that this weekend. But we, we do wrestle meme where we look at uh, the week's uh, wrestling clips, and we also tell some exclusive stories on there as well. Sometimes the clips, uh, sometimes we'll get some clips from the page, and we'll stick it on the uh, main channel. But um, yeah, it's um, no, it's uh, it's great fun, and obviously we've got the Discord group where everyone um, talks to each other. So um, yeah, it's all good. Uh, I've just had a message. Uh, let me just check this. Um, okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out. No, I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah, someone said um, the other day. Uh, so we mentioned uh, the size of the roster on AEW. WCW, I think uh, the one guy put, um, I got the year mixed up. I think he said the biggest roster at the time for WCW was 1999, and it was like uh, 109 wrestlers or 110 wrestlers. 110 wrestlers? Yeah, he said that was the um, biggest, like the roster was. And like I said, AEW, I think it's 198. And then you've got, that's like another 100 on ROH, but some of them works on AEW as well. So if we be generous and say 50, AEW is, Tony Khan's employing about 250 wrestlers, give or take. Wow. And what's like the average, okay, what's the lowest contract? AEW. Yeah, like the lowest downside contract for AEW. We know that like Okada is making four and a half million a year, but what what would like say Jungle Boy be making or yeah. Sadie Guevara? Well, speaking of which, breaking news: Tony uh, Jack Jack Perry requested and and was denied his AEW release. Wow! Breaking news. Uh. This Brian Alvarez. I actually don't mind Brian Alvarez, to be fair. He's a lot better than Meltzer. Uh, he is still under contract there, but there's no plans to bring him back to AEW. He has not spoken to Tony Khan in months, nor cleared anything he has done in storyline for New Japan. Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling like him tearing up the... Uh, yeah, because he teared up his AEW contract in New Japan. I don't know if you saw that. No, really? Yeah, and uh, he's been using the nickname the uh, the scapegoat, and I think he came to a match and he was wearing like a like a goat helmet. He looked like fucking Mantor, 
Um, <laughs> but um, and he just grew his beard out. Um, every wrestler, as they go away, they seem to grow a beard out for some reason. But yeah, apparently um, that's what's happening at the minute. Wow. Well, lady, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it first. Jungle Jack Perry. Could this be an angle, you think? Could this be a work? Possibly. Because um, that's the thing as well. A lot of these... Interpromotional angle between New Japan and uh, WCW? Possibly. I'm not 37 years old, by the way. j Dog. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm <laughs> 34. Um, the thing is, as well, like some of these dirt sheet writers, they are paid by AW, so they might be in on it. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, make sure to like the stream. Thank you, Cody. Yes, please make sure to like the stream, it helps the algorithm. And, uh, yeah, well. Breaking news, Jungle Boy requesting his release from AEW. So does that mean he wants to stick with New Japan full-time and get rid of, uh, I don't know. guess maybe so. He to, maybe he wants to go to WWE. Well, he's part of one of the groups, not Bullet Club, but he's part of another group. Um, I don't think it's a big group at all because I, I, I can't remember the name. But um, yeah, it's um, I don't know if you haven't talked to the boss in months. I guess you wouldn't be happy. But at the same time, if you're getting paid for doing fuck all, take that money. <laughs> no, take I would. Money indeed. All right, all right. So, all right. If you're not, if you're not yet signed up to the Patreon. We're gonna watch. What are we gonna watch this weekend? Uh, should we do Jake and Macho Man? It's Tuesday in Texas. Jake versus Macho Man, Tuesday night in Texas. And do you have the link for those who aren't yet signed up to the Patreon? I, I can't do the chat. Oh no, can I do the chat? I'm sure you can. I can't because I'm not. I'm not running the stream. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. Can they? Yeah, I have to try and connect one with her. She's an account. Let me see if I can connect this quickly. Uh, so continue. Well, hold on a second. Allow. Actually, yeah, you can just post it on there, and I'll just post it. I know, I've got it. Just type it in. No, I've got, I've got uh, yeah. Uh, no, because I couldn't leave any comments, neither. You can't oh, okay. write a comment? Yes, you can. I, I seen you I, do it before. I know I can now. Okay. Did you? Yeah, well, the other day I was on me I, I I put it on my phone, but now I can actually uh do it. So yeah, I've just uh, put the message in the chat there. Wanna we'll bring it up? Let me go at the bottom. Jesus Christ. We've got a lot of people here. We've got a lot of interaction. Hey, the more interactions that we have, that helps with the algorithm, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I would imagine so. Um, yeah, like, because it's, it's likes, subscribes, and that, I think impressions. So it's like the amount of people actually uh, saw it as well. Even if they didn't click on the video, they saw your video during their feed or something like that. So, um, yeah, like I said, we're still learning. What are we? Two year, two years out on this podcast, so we're still learning every day. Still learning every day. Okay, type it in again that way. There, just type it in again. Yep. Uh, Patreon forward slash Cafe de Rene. So it should be at the there bottom now. Yep. There See we go. One? There it is. Patreon slash Cafe de Rene. If you're not yet subscribed. Please subscribe. It's only five dollars a month. We get match of the week every weekend. We pick a different match and we watch it all together. And 
we do WrestleMania every Wednesday where we gather up clips and memes and we have a good time laughing at them. And what else do we do? Oh, yeah. We do pay-per-view watch-alongs. And this month is... Well, beginning of April, WrestleMania, two nights in a row. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> WrestleMania, folks, two nights in a row. So you can watch with me, James, and you never knew who else is going to pop up. I done it last year. It killed, it killed me last year. I done it two nights in a row. It's not even two nights. It starts up one, doesn't finish like half past five in the morning. <laughs> it killed me last year. I wouldn't care as well. I stayed up to the night two. Night two it was morning two for me. I was staying up for Cody to win. Fucking Roman retained. If he does it again this year, I'm giving up with WWE. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not watching them again. <laughs> and what do we got here? We got... Daniel P, thank you. Woo! Bagpipes. What does that mean? Bagpipes. You know what bagpipes are? Yeah. So yeah, you must like bagpipes. You must like bagpipes. Okay. Well, I know. Well, there was a of a Canadian who liked bag bagpipes, and his name was Roddy Piper. His name was Rowdy Roddy Piper. Did I ever tell you where I watch Roddy Piper live wrestling for WWE? No. It was the one week where him and Ric Flair were the tag team champions. Oh, okay. They beat the Spirit Squad like a few days beforehand. So I right. actually saw Ric Flair and Roddy Piper live as they was tag team champions. They was actually tagging with the Highlanders, funny enough. Whoa. It was them against the uh, Spirit Squad. And like, so P Piper's gimmick was that he's Scottish, <laughs> even though he's very, very much Canadian. And it was like, he was trying, I don't know if he was trying to do a Scottish accent. Or English. So glad to be back here in Nottingham. <laughs> so, <laughs> someone who's from Nottingham, I just found it. I was pissing myself laughing. But uh, <laughs> it was awesome seeing actually seeing Piper and Flair live wrestling. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. Ask people to like the stream more often for Algo. Algorithm. Okay. I've enjoyed his uh, constructive criticism, by the way. So, and I do appreciate every one of every one of it yeah like i said i know the channel can get better and it can grow more i do appreciate all of it um but you know we're just doing our best and obviously we're learning every day it's not our full-time job so wish it was uh well put it this way renee i've bought myself a euro millions ticket tonight and uh, the jackpot's 25 million so if i win it then i can devote all my time to cafe day renee <laughs> <laughs> if you win it, uh, sayonara cafe every day. You'll be, <laughs> yeah, you won't be doing it anymore. <laughs> oh, no, I did for love. You know, I do. <laughs> All right. All right. So if you're not signed up to the Patreon, uh, we will see you on Monday for Tank Tolan and Robbie McAllister of the Highlanders. It's going to be a great time. 6 p.m. Eastern, live on Cafe de Renee YouTube channel. All right, everyone. See you then. Bonsoir.